So guys, Eli here, back for a new stuff video. Um, all CD, well, mostly CDs, all music, almost all metal, um, pretty much almost all either black or death metal, so that's pretty cool. Uh, mostly CDs, got one vinyl record, and it's a pretty big stack, so I guess let's uh, push forward. Picked up this uh, Papa Mer Emeritus uh, 2 Ghost Funko Pop. I don't uh, necessarily collect Funko Pops, but I do have a... I do have a, st I have like 10 or so. They are cool, it's just not a world that I want to collect on a serious level, because I mean, th there's like thousands of them, so. I'm a big Ghost fan, as, I was, as I've said before. Um, this is one of my favorite looks um, that he had. This was like for the second album, I think. But yeah, there's uh, there's at least three Papa Emeritus Ghost uh, Funko Pops, like from all the different, uh, you know, stages of the band, but this is one of my favorites, so. Pretty cool. I didn't even know it existed until I bought it the other day. We'll just start off with the vinyl because I only have one. It's a seven inch vinyl uh, from uh, 2004. <clears throat> We're talking about uh, Pennsylvania's uh, Desiderion. I always found that name really hard to say. <laughs> this is Despondent. Uh, this came out on Paragon Records. You might know this band for having uh, Kaz Grant, aka, AKA the Black Lord of Crucifixion. Uh, on drums. You'll know Kaz from Crucifier, uh, Grand Belial's Key, and a bunch of other cool smaller bands. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Deaths of Virion are just, just straight, dirty, black metal. Um, they've been around quite a while. I don't know if they're active now. But uh, yeah, I, it's not a band I've listened to a lot, but I have two releases from them now, and it's pretty good. Out of all the CDs, this is the only non-black or death metal. So we're talking about uh, Phobos from Voivod. This came out back in 1997. Um, this, for some reason, it's a promo copy, but it came out in 98. So I'm not really sure why that is. Phobos is a really, really good album. I always liked it. I didn't know uh, until recently, actually, what kind of... Uh, like, it's actually a pretty fairly well-respected uh, album in the band's catalog and I say that I, I say I'm surprised because this is uh, one of the two albums that Snake uh, didn't do vocals on. Uh, they had a guy named Eric Forrester, Forrester right? I think Eric, yeah, Eric Forrester I think his name was uh, doing vocals for two albums. I don't want to say a weird era for the band but like I, see, yeah, like I said it's only those two albums that Snake didn't do vocals on which is kind of strange but Eric Forrester otherwise known as E-Force um, did quite Quite a fantastic job. Uh, so Phobos and Negatron, those are the albums that he did vocals on, and they're both really, really fucking good. Um, I would say this one is probably my, probably not my favorite of the two, but they're both really, really, really good. So if you've avoided Phobos and Negatron just because Snake uh, wasn't in the band at the time, definitely correct that because they're really, really good albums. They stand up incredibly well in you know Voivod's you know, historic, uh, discography. Next, we'll start with the black metal. And we'll start with a big bang because this is, this is one of my favorite black metal releases in, in, uh, I don't know, post 2000, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, I know this album is not unheard of. It's quite far from that, but I still feel like it's very underrated. And this is quite a gem. So we're talking about Anim Animus Mortis uh, out of Chile. This is their debut album. Atrilibus Residues from Verb and Flesh. This came out on De Beamer Morty uh, back in 2008. So, like I said, Chilean black metal band. They are. This album is just fucking awesome. I've heard a little bit of their other stuff. But uh, I'm not even going to go... It's been a long time since I've listened to it, so I'm not going to go into, like in the details, but it is black metal and it is phenomenal. When I say black metal from Chile, you're probably automatically thinking like, okay, that's going to be some dirty, evil, you know, South American type black metal, but it, it, this isn't. This is, this is more, I don't know, it's, it's got more of a classy vibe. It's, you know, it's well written. It's, it's fairly well played. It's not, you know, bestial black metal. This is, this is, mature and you know well thought out black metal if you check out only one album out out of everything i show you tonight i think you should definitely look into that one
And then we have the debut full length from uh, Abrahel. Abrahel were a black metal band out of Spain. Not sure there if they're active or not. This came out in 2008. Like I said, it was their debut album. But this is also, I'd say, a little bit of an underrated album. It's quite a bit more dirty sounding, you know, in comparison to the Animus Mortis album. But it's just, it's really good black metal. It has one review on Metal Archives. It's a little bit underwhelming, so don't, don't base your opinions or or don't, don't let that make the decision for you. Um, give this album a shot. I think it's actually pretty good. Good enough to, let's just put it this way, I had heard it before and I bought it just recently and I, I heard this years ago, so obviously kind of stuck in my mind and yeah, Abrahel, Spanish black metal, really good. We have another, another underrated black metal album, if I don't say so myself. Only, uh, only full-length album this band ever did. They had a demo out before that, but we're talking about Meridian out of Switzerland. This came out on Season of Mist Records. I guess you could say this album's kind of noteworthy for having uh, Jack D. Ripper on vocals, who you might know from Morgul. Um, Morgul, yeah, much better known, uh, you know, Swiss black metal band, but uh, Meridian is a, a completely, you know, different beast than Morgul. This is a uh, maybe kind of modern-ish sounding symphonic black metal, and it's just really, really, really good black metal. Um, I, other than my buddy John, who turned me on to this album years ago, I've never heard anyone mention this ever, not even one time. So um, I got this pretty cheap, so you could probably still find copies. But yeah, check out this Meridian album, and let me know what you think. Then we have this uh, Finnish black metal band's uh, debut album from 1995. We're talking about Mor uh, Morning Star with their album Rivendell. Um, this came out on Wild Rags Records, so obviously Wild Rags stuff not really easy to get a hold of these days. It's kind of a you know cult at a label. Um, Morning Star, they might still be active. I can't remember. They kind of went through a change in sound at one point. Uh, first couple albums, at least couple, or any, from what I can remember, were, you know, raw Finnish black metal, raw, nasty black metal, you know, like the, that kind that used to come out of Finland in the, you know, mid-90s. Then they would become kind of just like more of a traditional heavy metal band, but I don't like their heavy metal stuff. I think they played black metal much, much, much better, but uh, I've never really thought this band, were, you know, were amazing, but I like some of their early stuff okay, so yeah. Rivendell from Morningstar. Worth a listen if you haven't heard it. Next we have the second full-length album from 2003 from the very weird black metal band known as the Meads of Asphodel with the Exhuming the Grave of Yeshua. I've heard this album before and I'll be honest, I never really cared for it. I like their later stuff um, a lot more like... Uh, uh, what's called The Murder of Jesus the Jew, I think I think it was called, and then uh, an album called Sonder Commando. Both really, really good and, you know, more recent. This came out, like I said, in uh, 2003, their second album out on Supernal Records. Um, cool band. I just, th for some reason, their early stuff just <laughs> kind of just doesn't quite do it for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited to give it, a, you know, a fresh spin. You know, maybe a fresh take on the band. Um, if you've never heard them, they're they're very much, very very experimental. They've always had one foot firmly in the black metal genre, uh, but the other foot is just flying all over the place, going in different kind of dabbling in different genres. I mean, you got like electronic music, um, you got like psychedelic rock. You know, they're big Hawkwind fans. They're always covering Hawkwind. Fuck, dude, I think even a Hawkwind guy guests on this album. Alan Davey. I'm, isn't he in Hawkwind? I'm pretty sure Alan Davey's a guy in Hawkwind. Yeah, some of the more experimental black metal you'll, you'll ever hear. It's, I'm sure it's polarizing as fuck. People are going to either, you know, they're probably going to worship this band or it's just going to sound like utter noise to them. And like I said, I, I never really could get into the early stuff. But, uh, you know, giving it another go, we'll see how it goes. This next one's a weird choice, pretty much because this was a total blind buy. I've never heard of this band. They have one full-length album, and uh, 
when did this come out? 1998, we're talking about the Lords of Algol with Disciple of the Mysteries. So this is a black metal band out of uh, Michigan. They're long defunct at this point, I'm pretty sure. The reason I picked this up is because, well, A, it was really cheap, but mainly I picked it up because they uh, formed out of the ashes of a death metal band called Fatal, who were really good. Fatal had some killer uh, death metal stuff in the early 90s, and they, they, they did the whole... Uh, a, a good number of bands pulled this move in the mid to late nineties. They, you know, people jump ship from death metal to play black metal because black metal was becoming more popular. And I'm not saying all bands did that for, you know, trend, uh, trend jumping reasons. I think, I think, it, you know, in most cases it was genuine. It was like, you know, this black metal sound was, um, was getting more popular and, you know, people were being exposed to it and, you know, probably feeling inspired by it. You know, this, this, sort of new style of music comes in and you know it's really cool and you know, I, I can see why a band would want to you know switch from death metal to black metal just out of sheer inspiration I, you know i think people are a little bit too hard on bands sometimes for switching genres it's not always you know the intentions are good most of the time i i, I would think then we got this uh most recent album from uh, 2021 from a, I guess you'd call him a post-black metal band out of uh, Austria. We're talking about Har Harakiri from the Sky, or Harakiri, Harakiri for the Sky with uh, Mare. I, I'm a sucker for these kinds of releases, these digibook things. Um, but I, but I've, al I've always wanted to hear this band. I, I'm not in the post-black metal at all, by the way. Um, this has two discs. Um, I, I kind of like... Alcest. Over the years, I've listened to a decent amount of Alcest. I hadn't listened to them for a long time until I uh, picked up their most recent album, and I really, really, really liked it. So I know these guys are big fans of Alcest. There's a lot of cool artwork in here. And I've heard that they're a good band, so I figured I'd give it a go. It might not be my thing at all, but uh, I'm hoping to you know, maybe broaden my horizons just a, just a little bit. And the last black metal thing we have here is this uh, debut album from 1998. Uh, came out on Necropolis Records. I did not intend to get a copy like this. It's a promo copy, but literally it's just the fucking CD. So yeah, Restless and Dead from Witchery. So I bought this from a Discog seller who <laughs> had this listed. For the picture, he had you know just a picture of the fucking car the artwork for this album. Um, and I don't know if I read the fine print, but it says, <laughs> I read it after I bought it. It said a rare radio promo CD with, um, something like custom or exclusive artwork on the CD, which is a fucking lie. Cause all this is, is this is this, this is the original CD just with nothing else. I'm okay with buying promos that come in like a cardboard sleeve. But I don't buy CDs that have no cover art at all. So I was really, really pissed um, when this is what fucking showed up in the mail. But whatever. Uh, I asked him for a refund. It looks like it's coming. It's been like five days. It's still pending. Do you guys, do you guys know what that's all about? When you, If anyone's had a, had a refund on PayPal, what does pending mean? Pending refund? Like I said, it's been going on like four or five days. So I don't know what... what what pending exactly means and why it's taking so long, but whatever. It was ten bucks. Um, I just I was kind of pissed that he uh, lied, <laughs> completely lied about about the item. Um, so the rest of this is death metal. I was quite high, uh, quite happy to find this, and even happier knowing that this has been repressed because it's been long out of print. But uh, we're talking about. The Blasphemy album from Incantation. Hell's Head Bangers put this out, and I really like what they did with that with this slip cover because that's not the original cover art. The original cover art you might remember if you're a huge Incantation fan, but that is the original cover art. So this album uh, came out back in 2002. It is their sixth full-length album, and for some reason. You never really heard many people talk about this album until the last couple years, I feel like. Um, it's a good album. I like it a lot. I've heard it before. Um, Incantation, for me, never disappoint. 
they've never put out even a remotely subpar album. So, um, this uh, this album had Mike Sa Saez from Death Rune on vocals. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard Death Rune, but uh, Death Rune were a really awesome band. I think they're still going, actually. I don't know if they've done anything recently, but uh, they have some really good demos from the early 90s. Just real, real good New York uh, death metal. Definitely looking to Death Rune, because I know you've heard Incantation already. So this next band I've always wanted to check out. Um, they've been on my radar for the last couple of years. I don't know if they're still together, but they were a band out of France. Uh, we're talking about Misanthrope with uh, Libertine Humiliations. This came out on the on the Holy Records out of France, 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 which was a really, really, really good label. Mostly, mostly black metal from what I remember. But uh, this is their fourth album. Uh, yeah, Digipack. And this came out back before digipacks were, you know, really, really common. I always wanted to check that band out. I guess they're like a like a progressive death metal, and I've always heard they were pretty good. So uh, Next, we have a promo copy of the third album from Oppressor. Death metal, technical death metal out of Chicago. Uh, um, this band is mostly well-known for their debut album. Um, it, what can I say? It's just good, good technical death metal, you know, technical death metal done right. Um, yeah, check out Oppressor. I've, yeah, I've never heard anything beyond their first album, so thought I'd check it out. I got it for like two or three bucks. This next one, this is a very cool release. I, I did not know about this. Um, this initially, this was a VHS. This came out on VHS back in 97. Now we're talking about Four Darkest Eyes from My Dying Bride. This just came out this year. It's got, if you look at that, it's got a whole bunch of shit on it. Really cool. I was really stoked to see this. If you couldn't see that very well, this this has a uh, live set from 1996, uh, Krakow, Poland. Um, it's got the CD and then it's got a DVD of that same show. And it's got a bunch of music videos for some of their early songs and extra content. It's got some early live performances from 92 and 93 and live at Dynamo in 95. It's a bunch of cool stuff on this. It's two discs. Yeah, I was really stoked to get this. I, I love My Dying Bride, especially old My Dying Bride. But don't get me wrong, I think they're still a good band. I just, you know, I prefer their early stuff. At least up until the mid Early to mid 2000s, because some of that 2000s stuff is really fucking good. Like on a different level, good. And I have not the most recent, but the second most recent uh, full length from Swallow the Sun. Um, I don't, I'm not a big Swallow the Sun fan, but I do like some of their stuff. And I've heard their last two albums have been really good, so I figured I'll give it a shot. Um, yeah, so this came out in 2019. This is their seventh album. Swallow the Sun are a melodic doom death uh, band out of Finland, if you're not familiar. You probably are, though, because they're a pretty popular band. Then I have a band that I always... Oops. <laughs> I always thought this band was really, really, really cool. Um, never hear anyone talk about them, but they are like a funeral doom or doom death band out of out of Italy. Um, <clears throat> this is their third and most recent album from 2013. We're talking about Enoch with Sumerian Chants. Came out on uh, Sataneth Records, which is a uh, Russian Russian record label. Usually puts out some good black and death metal, mostly death metal from what I've seen. But uh, yeah, if you like if you like doom death and you've never heard Enoch, definitely look into them. Their, their, uh, their earlier stuff is really, really good. I've never heard this album, but uh, I'm thinking it'll be good. I'm hoping. I will see. And last but not least, we have the debut album uh, from back in 98 from uh, Long Voyage Back, self-titled debut. Long Voyage Back, they kind of play like a death, like a black death uh, with some doom touches. You can kind of think, 
almost all eras of Bathory. It's like early Bathory plus Viking Bathory mixed in. Um, but despite all that, I mean, not no nowhere near as good as Bathory, but uh, kind of a mixed bag from what I've heard. I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of the material from this band over the years, and some of it I thought was pretty good. Some of it I didn't think was was all that great. But uh, this is a solo project from uh, Phil Gresick, who was in Bestial Warlust, uh, Destroyer Six Six Six, and Hobbs Angel of Death. So he's he's an Australian metal legend in his own right. This came out on a label I've never heard of, uh, Destructive Commando, which obviously very a label. Clearly inspired by the band, um, uh, what's that prog band? The really weird prog band, Magma. Because look at this. I mean, not only is the name that comes from either a Magma song or an album, and they even use the Magma logo. So I'm not <laughs> kind of an interesting idea for for a for a label. But uh, yeah, I've never heard anyone ever talk about this band. I only know about them because I've taken some pretty deep dives into the like extreme metal world of Australia. So many good bands. Um, some of my all-time favorite bands come from Australia. Um, so yeah, I've known about that band a long time, never owned anything from them. So anyways, that's all I got, guys. What do you think? You heard any of these releases? Are you a fan of any of these bands? Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. As always, Louis says hello, and thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll talk soon.